Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. I hope you're having a beautiful day. And if not, I'm very sure that you can turn it around anytime you like. By the way, you must be thinking, Unmesh, what's wrong with you? Are you going crazy? Well, I won't deny that fact, but look at the video closely. What's wrong with this video? Well, do you think this is a photographically negative video? Well, if this were a photographically negative video, look at the lights at the back, they're still bright. A little bit of the background is still bright. That wouldn't be the case if this was photographically negative. What else is there? Have a look. Right now, I'm holding a white piece of paper. This is black. So it should be photographically negative, right? But again, here I have a colorful piece of paper. Have a look at this. This is a little brighter. How is this happening? What in the world is this bizarro world right there? Well, this, my friend, is saturation mask. Whatever you're seeing right now is nothing but information of which area has more color and which area has less color. That's what saturation mask does. Any area that has more color or the color is more intense right there, those areas would be brighter and areas with less color would be darker. That's what's happening right now. We can use these saturation masks to enhance colors, modify them, and we already have a video about it, which you can watch right here after watching this video, of course. Now, what if you wanted to create a mask, not about how much color there is in a particular area, but what color there is. And that, my friend, is called a hue mask. How to create it, how to use it, and what to do with it in the first place, we're gonna cover it all in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and trust me, this is going to be super exciting. So what do you think is this? This is electromagnetic spectrum. If you're a physics student, you already ace this, but we're gonna add a little bit of Photoshop into it. So what is electromagnetic spectrum? Well, it is nothing but a range of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. Now you might ask Unmesh, what is electromagnetic radiation? Electromagnetic radiation is nothing but light but we can only see a small range of this and that is called visible light. Just this bit of range. Everything here is electromagnetic radiation. Every frequency is a frequency of electromagnetic radiation, but we can see just this small sliver of that and that is visible light. Why am I telling you this? Have a look at this. Every light has a frequency, or in other words, you can also say that every light has a wavelength. Now, wavelength is the opposite of frequency. The higher the frequency, the lower the wavelength. So you can say that the color on the left has higher frequency, but lower wavelength. The color on the right has lower frequency, but higher wavelength. Now, what happens when you create a hue mask? Well, let's create one. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of the background layer. Now let's go to Filter, Other, Choose HSB, HSL. Choose HSB here and RGB at the top right there. Hit OK. Now this looks weird. Just go to channels first. If you cannot see channels, go to window and make sure channels is checked. Now inside of channels, since we chose HSB, red is the hue mask, green is the saturation mask and B is the brightness mask. Let's go and create a mask of the red by just clicking there. Press Ctrl or Command A. Press Ctrl or Command C for copying that. Select the RGB back and now you can delete it and create a brand new layer and just paste it by pressing Ctrl or Command V. So have a look at what it's doing. Is it making sense now? The left side is brighter and the right side is darker and that's what the hue mask is doing. The lower the wavelength of the light, the brighter it's going to be and the higher the wavelength, the darker it's going to be. You can say the opposite thing about frequency but you get the point here. So you can clearly see right here that it's selecting more of the cooler colors here and not selecting the warmer colors here. You can generalize that. This is not the exact definition of the hue mask, but something to make it simple. If you want an exact definition, here it is. The lesser the wavelength, the brighter it's going to be, and the higher the wavelength, the darker it's going to be. And by the way, a sliver that you see here, it's just because of a little error. Don't mind that. Now coming to the part of how we can use it. Well, you have the freedom to use it any which way you want. You can experiment with curves, you can experiment with color balance, with selective color. The sky is the limit. I, I must say the cosmos is the limit. 
But in this case, I have found some good uses with hue saturation, which we're going to demonstrate right now. So as you can see right now in this image, the background is cool, but it's not cool enough and the subject is not warm enough. So we can select those areas and manipulate them separately. So first of all, let's create a hue mask. And to do that, press Ctrl or Command J. We already did this. Let's go to filter HSB HSL. The last filter would be right here. But if you're forgetting that, simply go to other and then high pass. I forget it all the time. Anyway, let's choose HSB. Hit OK. There you go. It gives you a bizarre image. All you need to do is to go to channels and understand what this is. Red is hue mask. Green is saturation mask. Blue is brightness mask. So we just need the hue mask and we can directly make a selection out of this by holding the control or command and clicking on the thumbnail. We already have that selection. Let's come back to RGB. You can actually delete this right now. The selection is active. And with the selection active, we can create our adjustment layer. Let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer. See, that mask just shows up right over there. Now, as you play with hue and saturation, you might notice that sometimes it might lead to banding here and there. And if it does, you might need to blur the mask a little. We'll get to that later, but for right now, we don't need it much. We're just gonna increase the saturation just a bit, keep it a little bit cooler at about 44. How does it look like to you? It isn't looking like much. Let's make a copy of this. Press Ctrl or Command J. Now with this copy, we just want to colorize those areas with cool colors. To do that, again, let's get back to hue saturation adjustments by double clicking on the symbol. The properties will automatically open up. Now you can reset it and check colorize. That way we can colorize everything that's in the mask with one color. So we can choose a bluer color right here. So now it is cool enough, right? And now you can choose a saturation of your choice. There you go. Now that is looking like something. I would take it a little more to the left hand side. There we go. That's matching the mood and play with the saturation according to your wish. You can also change the blend mode from normal to soft light to create a more contrasty look. Now always zoom in and check if there's banding. Yes, there is banding and I warned you about it. No problem. Just open up the mask properties and then just increase the feather to something like 20 or 40. So let's go for 20. That's working. You can also go even higher if you wish to. Let's go 40 for even smoother results. There you go. Wonderful, isn't it? Let's take a look at the before and after. So here is the before. Here is the after. We have already come a long way. Now it's time for the warm areas. That's where the magic happens. Now for the warm areas, we don't have to create a mask all over again. We already have mask for the cold areas. Well, we just have to invert the mask. Press Ctrl or Command J. Not cold areas, but cool areas. There's a difference. I just made a copy, select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Now we didn't want changes like this. So let's reset that and change the blend mode back to normal. Now we can play with the saturation. Maybe make it a little more saturated right there. And you can play with the hue just a little bit. Now we're gonna do the same thing here. Make a copy of this, change the blend mode to soft light. And now let's go back here, let's reset it. And we're gonna colorize it with one color. And let's choose a warm color, of course. And we can just increase the saturation here. The background is looking fantastic, but the skin is not. No worries, we can take care of that later. But I absolutely am in love with this. So select this adjustment layer, press Ctrl or Command G to create a group with just that one layer. Now with that group selected, click on the mask button to create a mask. Now you have two masks for the same layer. Now select that mask, take the brush, with black as the foreground color, just paint over the skin. Now make sure you're choosing a soft round brush. Now we don't want to completely take away the effect from the face. So you can open up the mask properties again by double clicking here, or you can just go to window properties. And now you can just decrease the density. It's like opacity for the mask. So let's just increase the density and keep it at about 70%. How do you feel about that? 70 looks nice. And there you have it. Let's take a look at the before and after again. Here's the before, here's the after. Pretty nice, isn't it? Now, overall, the image looks a little darker. So we can brighten it a little bit and no Pix Imperfect tutorial is complete without curves. You already know the answer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And see, there's a lot of gap here that we can use and utilize. So hold the Alt key, the Option key and take the slider slowly and gradually to the left. Just when you begin to see these artifacts stop, that means in those areas we're losing details. We don't want to completely lose details, so we can stop just about right there. There you go. All right, here's the before, here's the after. Some more brightness. Now the head is looking a little heavy, so we need to lighten the head up a little bit and you can call it the lightheaded trick. That is, simply create a curves adjustment layer and 
brighten it up like this. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and take this brightening effect away from the bright areas of the face and keep it only in the dark areas. That way it just gets a little lighter. So take it away from the bright areas again. You know what to do. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it to break it apart. Take it apart and make the transition smoother. Once you're satisfied, hit OK. Now select the mask. Take a gradient and choose a gradient from white to black and simply draw that gradient right here. There you go. Have a look at the head now. Here's the before, here is the after. Isn't the head a little lighter? Now anytime skin starts to look a little more yellowish in photos in Photoshop, well, a simple trick to pink it up a little bit is creating a color lookup adjustment layer and choosing this one called soft warming. It really softens everything up. Now you can go for something like 60% uh, here. We don't want it that much or maybe 45. This is too much. All right. Now you can make a copy of this for a little bit of contrast. Press Ctrl or Command J. Just duplicate that and change the blend mode to soft light. This is too much contrast and decrease the opacity to 20%. Now take a look at this. Isn't this fantastic? Here is the before. Here is the after. We definitely have come a long way. Also, you can make a group of all of these adjustments. Select the first one. Hold the Shift key. Select the topmost one. Press Ctrl or Command G to group them in. And now you can choose whatever opacity you choose. Because sometimes as humans, we have the habit of going overboard. So about 60 would be a very subtle adjustment. And the canvas is yours. So that's how hue masks work in Photoshop. It simply selects the colors of lower wavelengths or higher frequencies. And of course, you can always just invert the mask to your liking and choose the opposite. You can use it to modify colors all you want, but keep in mind sometimes when you're going intense with it, it might create some banning effect. So be aware of that. And in those times, you might want to blur the mask up a little bit. Just add a little bit of feather. That should do the trick. Thank you so much for watching this video. And a quick reminder, we have a massive Photoshop course coming out and it has everything right from the beginning to the advanced and all of the techniques like this and many, many more. 30 plus hours of content, 50 lessons. You just have everything right there, everything you want to know about Photoshop and you can get the first few lessons for free right now. You can just sign up and reserve your spot to be the first group of awesome people to get the first three classes absolutely for free. So do sign up by going to pix.live slash free lessons. By the way, you can also enter the giveaway. Absolutely. And it's expiring in just a few days. You can win the entire course as well. Absolutely for free. Check the link in the description for more details. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching again. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.